Fragments of silicon on the wall. Who could ever count them all? Welcome to another installment of Fragments of Silicon, the European Interviews. Um, joining us this week is Peter Petrov of PyDev Bulgaria. Hello, Peter. Hello. Um, hello. Hello. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, concerned there for a bit, but yes. Uh, so, how are you doing today? Well, nice. Kind of sleepy day as usual. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> um, oh. <clears throat> but anyway, so how we like to get started is we like to get to know the person behind Game Studio and what have you, and we start with this question. What got what got you interested in video games, both on a personal and a professional level? Well, it all started when now I'm 32 years old. That was like 23 or even more years ago when I was five year old kid. A friend of me have got a video game console, like uh, well, bootleg Nintendo. NES clones. They were popular back in the days in Bulgaria. Nobody had original tech. It was everything. It was the industry of the piracy here. But anyways, uh, she got a, such a we call them TV game. And I played Super Mario. On it. And I played Tanks and Duck Hunt and things like that. And I literally fell in love with this device so strong that I wanted my, my parents to buy me a so-called TV game. And they bought me uh, the same Nintendo NES clone, and I started playing games. Everything started from there, from NES. By the way, I didn't know what is NES because, yeah, of economic reasons. But mm -hmm. Super Mario was my favorite game of all times back in the days. And besides that, we also have some. Uh, Russian consoles imitating Nintendo Game and Watch, and also we had some uh, so-called brick game consoles, and we also have the, had the Japanese Tamagotchi. All these kind of gaming devices get me straight into the gaming industry. Let me just invite some friends to the stream, because okay. they're spamming me on Facebook. <laughs> and basically, it's with that. And then when I become the first. Uh, well, in Bulgaria, we studied for 20 years, and when I was in my first uh, school year, a friend of me bought an uh, Apple IIe computer, the Bulgarian version named Pravets, but it was an Apple II computer. And I started learning basic. And like, I was seven years old, eight years old, but I already get used to uh, uh, rewriting by, code by hand from the magazine from the magazines to the computer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's what you said you off on game development journey. Well, a lot of time passed. A lot of time passed. Like I was nine, I was nine years old. Then I become ten years old. I didn't have the computer myself. I only have the TV games, but I had a, the pen and paper. And my childhood was most likely in uh, playing with the constructor Lego imitations here and drawing board games and paper that I used to play with my grand. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was very funny childhood. I had a friend, the same friend that had the Apple IIe computer, was also testing my board games, but it all started there. Uh, at some point of time, I started. Uh, 
like experimenting with the cons uh, the game console I had, like short circuiting the cartridge pins and things like that. That led to memory corruptions. Games with took used to crash and very funny glitches used to happen. Like for example, glitched levels in Super Mario Bros. and things like that. But this behavior started me getting even more interested. Though my parents didn't have so much of money, so I, I wasn't able to, to yet afford a computer, but I knew that I wanted to uh, go study computer science. Mm -hmm. And when I was uh, 13 or 14 years old, I was professionally oriented that it was my dream to make video games. I was like uh, 14 years old, I guess, somewhere then. The seventh year of my uh, school. And then I uh, went to go to the high school studying programming, software, software engineering, programming and things like that. It was good. It was good. And at this time, my parents finally decided to buy me a computer. But instead of me start to play Counter-Strike and everything that was popular at that time, I decided to learn my first programming language beside BASIC was Turbo Pascal. Then I um, started writing uh, games for MC-DOS, because that was something I can do. But it was my first uh, steps of software development. Then, so, yes? Yeah, so what ended up being your first um coding projects in terms of like game development here with the dos and the basic well the first thing was uh, the first thing i can't remember what the first thing is first because thing is. i constantly used to write something and to test it out, to test different things but uh it was a game similar to asteroids i guess but i can't remember which one but i do remember some of them the first actual bigger game I did was was a platformer where you move a uh, human being. Oh, well, thanks for finding that glitch out. I must patch the Steam version. Steam version. <laughs> <laughs> no, looks like I left some objects loaded in global space. Uh, <laughs> looks like, okay, <laughs> looks like I get objects in work in global space damn me <laughs> okay uh, did you use the better branch on steam or you use the public branch i think that's what that is using like... uh, i'm using the free use, demo uh, available. The, the free demo or the steam key activation um we're using the one that was on steam um right now not the steam key demo yeah i'm using the free demo on steam okay fragment me out i don't know how to swear this but uh, <laughs> i need to fix this bug i absolutely need to fix this not bug. the first time we found a bug on air what we'll probably won't be the last <laughs> well... I will actually fix and immediately upload a new a new build of the game. <laughs> so yeah, that that bug got me distracted. That that, that bug got me distracted. Well, uh, yeah. Well, reorienting <laughs> where we were, we were talking about your beginning development projects. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were before I bought, I bought myself on this book. Uh, so yeah, the it was a platformer where uh, Stickman moves to collect different coins and uh, solve some puzzles. And actually, that game is very inspirative for all my future project. Hmm. And I started writing a Super Mario one, but uh, the language and the platform was just not the thing i was watching not not the good thing for such kind of project then i started learning understandable then i started learning game maker it was back in the days free and not that very popular but it was an interesting piece of software i started making my first fan made super mario project of course that's strictly speaking illegal like most mario fun games and nintendo usually don't like them but 
Yeah, that's another story. I've made this game like I finished it in 2011. In the meantime, I was making uh, another one, barely Lego project, a Tetris like game with physics, which I actually tried to release commercially, commercially but nothing happened out. Only six people buy it. And they were all my friends. <laughs> so, yeah. And when I completed the high school and started uh, the university, it was also a computer science university. I completed the last version of my Super Mario game and started learning C++ and uh, uh, actually C++. Started trying to make a game engine on that. And when I completed the university, I started to work at, uh, at the Game Loft. It's a mobile games company. And in the meantime, I started learning the Unity game engine and the Unreal game engine. And this time I decided to stick with Unity, start learning C Sharp. And uh, that's what are you playing right now? Uh, the combined years of fruits of efforts, as it were. Um, and yeah, I suppose that does get us to the present day. Uh, so in re what is Colorblend FX for those who might not know what this game is or they're not watching the stream right now or what have you? Uh, just let me find my my email and my document with these answers because they're... <laughs> People tell me, practice this answer in front of the mirror. Like, well, if it helps. <laughs> yes, it's just, I just need to send your Twitch link to another one bunch of friends because I want to bring them here. Okay. Um... I, I suppose in the moment. Yeah, yeah that's because but, it's a routine for me, spamming your link in all my friends. Hopefully yeah. somebody coming to watch me. And well, if, well, if they don't... They, oh, they're cool. <laughs> yeah. I will note if they don't see the live broadcast, this is being archived uh, as a VOD. Um, yeah. You know, it'll, be you know, it'll, it'll be available to watch you know, after it completes. And we yeah. will to YouTube later on today. So right. no worries. Yeah. So no worries there. Okay. I finally um, fixed this. I finally fixed this book. I was fixing this book in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. What did you ask me because I was my my uh thoughts. Um, oh yeah you yeah you you asked me that question yes. Yeah so, yeah. yeah uh, so what color blend FX? Color Blend FX is a 2.5D puzzle platformer in Metroidvania where the ever quad like creatures eat the colors out of the world and the good guys, the Spoatians, need to cooperate to blend them back into the world. Uh, I guess the elevator is stuck now. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was the elevator pitch. But I now see. the elevator is stuck and I can continue on. You are already playing the game. So yeah, the trailer video is the usual thing I ask people to watch. And the game is highly kind of inspired by by Limbo, Inside, Little Nightmares, Axiom Verge, Metroid. But uh, but I decided to take a unique approach. Instead of darkness, like most of this genre game do, we choose the exactly the opposite. The light and the discovered world where the important objects pop in color. By the way, this visual style is kind of inspired by games like Portal, Mirror's Edge, and uh, Human Fall Flat. Yeah, the game uses traditional puzzle elements, like you see in the puzzle, the crate in the first level, but also plays a lot with the colors. Characters can change their colors. You will notice this soon. You will notice uh, you can interact with colored objects, like you aren't after the key and the walk, you are after the color of the key. And you're exactly on this level right now. You actually just completed it. And yeah, like all the works, all the slime must be squashed close to the crystal blocks of the same color to destroy them. You must ensure your character is painted in a specific set of colors in order to pass access control mechanics and things like that. And things like that. Within the game, you unlock different abilities that grant you access to other areas to explore. It's typical for the Metroidvania genre. Though keep in mind, first five levels are quite linear, with only some passages hinting it may be a Metroidvania. But after you complete the first chapter, we will jump into this Metroid-style level design. Inside. Yeah. Right. 
So I'm so just... I think this is the long answer and the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly the case. Um, now, I suppose in regards to the demo that we're showcasing here right now, uh, how much of the game is represented here? Or indeed, is this going to be a representation of what the actual game is going to look like? Uh, the actual game will exactly look like this. This is the final, uh, the distinctive art style of this game. You see, this evil douchebag, as he used to tell uh, this, his minions, Lord Ashen, was so evil that he decided to eat the colors out of the world. And that's what Lord Ashen did. He ate the colors out of the universe. Right. And the Spotians must have stopped him. Though he failed to eat the cover of some objects, <laughs> but that's another part of the story. Right. Well, let me clarify a bit. When I'm talking about representation, it's not necessarily art style or mechanics. It's more like, is the level that um, we are showing here going to be in the final game? Yes, it... it is the first actual chapter of the final game. Okay. This is the... But not every Yeah. Yeah. This this not, level not sorry, the levels from the, that will be the first level is in the final game. Okay, that's good to know. So this this is a true taste and not just what this game is going to be like. Which those demos do exist as well. Nothing well you I hope that the, the full story cutscene level that you played is already telling you a lot about the story. Not in generic way, but actually you see uh characters talking to each other. I love the uh, the Japanese RPG style of uh, the, the old classic style of RPG dialogue. Mm -hmm. Though the game isn't an RPG, it's n it have nothing to do with an RPG. But the speech bubbles are very inspired for, from the old RPG game. Yeah. And also, I see you aren't stuck in the puzzles. You actually play very well because. Uh, some people just can't get into this. They can't understand the basic thing, the basic things. <laughs> I, as far as if it helps, we do play a lot of uh, games. We do play a lot of indie platformers, like. Yeah. But uh, anyway, um, now are you a sole developer, or are you working with others to help bring Colorblend FX to life? The music that you hear, if you hear it, because I'm muting the stream, <laughs> it was made by a friend. Otherwise, almost everything is done by me, except the stuff that I bought or licensed in a way. Like, for example, I'm using uh, Adobe Substance uh, resources, I'm using Asset Store stuff, but most of the things are, are also done by me, including the characters of my own work. Though I may a little bit change them because. Uh, Technically, this is supposed to be a potato gnome, but uh, I may change them. Though some people are starting to like them this way, more robotic, uh, more organic, but yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> you decide to try to cook a slime. Nice. Yeah. Well, he's... Oh, I love, the, I love the death animations. <laughs> Uh, are those death animations finalized or are they placeholder? Uh, they're uh, ragdolls. As soon as something kills you, you become a ragdoll. Everything is then the physics engine. And I will leave it like that. Because sometimes yeah. they're hilarious. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, yeah, so I see we're going with, with the, the, uh, with the uh, type of spikes that have an interaction besides instantly kill you even if you touch the straight parts. <laughs> Very inspired by Spelunky. In Spelunky, you can just uh, walk through spikes, but if you jump from top on them, you die. Yeah. I just like to have a similar spikes because, uh, yes, they, they're sharp from above. And, of course, if you, if you bump into them, you can break them apart. And I decided to keep the spikes this way. Of course, there is a different kind of spikes that you can't interact this way with. But the wooden spikes, you only need to find a way to push them from from the side and you're done. And also in the game, there will be a permanent power-up that will make you completely immune to the spikes, so you'll be able to access this area. Interesting. Yes. Uh, anyway... Um... What made you want to go with a, 
a 3D art style or a 2.5D art style or however you want to define it rather than, you know, something pixel-based? Because I love games like uh, My Friend Pedro, Inside, and uh, Little Nightmares, and it's just a modern representation, keeping the classic gameplay. Like, for example, the new game uh, uh, Nintendo, soon, Nintendo recently released a game, uh, uh, The Legend of Zelda. Oh, I forget the title of that. Uh, like Wait, what? let me Google that for me. <laughs> yeah, Link's Awakening. You... Yeah, the Link's, yeah. Awakening. Link's Awakening. And they did it the 2.5D top down remaster. I love this art style. And uh, I love this cross section style of art too. And I just decided. In, uh... If nothing else, it certainly makes the game a, a lot more distinct um, because, well, not nothing. This is definitely a less common art style methodology of making indie platformers than, you know, retro. most people go just straight into pixel art, but, but I want the gameplay to feel like a 2D platformer, but still I want it to look like. Uh, something kind of modern. Also, the Tales Remastered was another inspiration for this 2.5D style. Okay, I can see the barrels and the benches again. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that glitch. And no. I suppose, uh, you know, given the premise and the art style, and uh, have you ever played the De Blob series? Um, what? Uh, it didn't got the name. D Blob. The Blob. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that's a no. Can is... you? No, but I want to check the game out. Can you send me a link mm -hmm. over Discord? Yeah, yeah. Or um, drop it give the me stream. Because I think when you see it, you'll get why yeah, I can... asked. You can notice that I definitely play Taxi on Verge <laughs> mm -hmm. because of this book. It's a big reference to the game. Um, yeah. Uh, the Blob. I see I yeah. think that's the best thing. So I most likely play this game. I just like the art style. Hey, it's actually $4.99. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, both games are on sale right now. There are. Oh, okay, I just buy instantly buy this for myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's another bouncing around color game. It's yeah, yeah. it's just me logging to my Steam. It would take a minute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That's some. It's a bad idea to send me a Steam link. <laughs> <laughs> This will end up becoming part of my library if it's cheap enough, or if I like it that much. I mean, like I said, it's a game series that's you know it's similar in idea landscape, but you know in terms of premise, vastly different because it's a it's basically three it's a three D platformer where you colorize everything. Right? Yeah. So. Well, here it's mostly finding and obtaining the crystals of essence. Right. In my it, game. Uh, yeah, it's you know it's a lot more well as you put it, Metroidvania. Um, and I suppose in that regard, I'm not sure if you can go uh, how in depth you can go into what like powers. I, I think you mentioned one of them. But like, uh, yeah, I mentioned one of them in the demo. There are none because yeah, that's you must reach the spark laboratory, and then you will take three of them: the big jump, and uh, another thing that I won't spoil, and uh, another thing that I won't spoil, but that it will give you a possibility to destroy this uh, crystal box on your own will. <laughs> Because you see this crystal box blocking various pathways, including in the first level, 
there's the the glass blocks. Then in the second level there was the blue blocks, and then the red pathway that you weren't able to pass. And in this level, the big jumps. You just can't jump over this drawer there, up there without the big jump. Right. Right. And in terms of the development process, what's the routine here? Like, um, I suppose first of all, like, are you doing this full time or is this a side project? You know, when you have a day job and all that stuff. Well, sadly, I have a day job. <laughs> I want to cry this out. <laughs> yeah, I have a full-time job that uh, we're currently working from home, so I'm neglecting it a bit, but still trying to do my tasks from time. But still, I'm trying, and currently I'm trying to find a publisher because I want to, to actually concentrate in working on cover brand effects full time. That makes sense. Cons like I said, considering the, the scope, both in terms of, uh, you know, what's on the graphics and the design, I imagine this is going to take a long time to complete if it's just if it's just you working uh, on the off hours yeah the the the, the, the canvas part was actually implementing the game mechanics the programming the puzzle systems like you've seen already you've seen several of the puzzle systems like in this level you see a resident evil style inventory by based take item use item puzzle style mm -hmm. i will let you Head bank. Uh, I would like to bang your head a little bit more in this level before start shooting it, but I hope you eventually solve it. Well, that's up to Petty. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you you have to obtain all the items, and then you have to guess how and what you should do with them. But then this guy there is constantly helping you anyway. So. Mm. <laughs> uh. But yeah. I mean, mind we, uh, mind you, we can't tarry along here too much more because um, Galix does have to get ready for work. Like, for yeah. what? For work. It is oh, about yeah. eleven thirty today, so we have time. But okay, okay. Like, just usually you have to work. So yeah. No need Sorry, I thought I might have mentioned that, but I guess I didn't. Yeah. No, no it would have been handy, but uh -huh. yeah. Anyway. Um, so, what made you want to put out a demo of Colorblend FX? The only logical thing, uh, allowing influencers, streamers, uh, showcase the game while in the meantime, gaining feedback from users, watching playthroughs, let's plays, and things like that. It's part of my initial growth process. The demo won't be eternal, though. I'm 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 planning to keep the demo, but once I find the publisher, I will keep the demo a little bit more there. We take most likely we'll take it down and put it to the full release of the game. Some people are using the demo for marketing purposes. I get that. I yes, I need to build an audience, and I still want that they have something to play. And also, this demo I'm. Sending this demo as part in with part of every pitch to every streamer and every publisher and everyone who I decide to pitch them uh, the, the game to. By the way, I think uh, actually you found you contacted me first. Yeah, yeah, it was the other way around. <laughs> you contacted me, <laughs> so I didn't actually pitch that game to you. Indeed, and, and um. Like outside of the show, what's the response been from other streamers? Well, weirdly enough, they're very positive, and that's making me more motivated. Some people just told me that's not my type of game. I tried to play it, but yeah, that's not my type of game. And they still try their best, but got stuck on the second level, failing to interact with the power scanner. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's going to occur. Like, you know, not every game is going to appeal, appeal to everyone. Um, yeah. Especially, especially since this is a platform game where you, you, you have to use your brain to figure out puzzles. And, you know, some people it's want a, a more, game. yeah, you know, maybe a more action-focused platform game, either in terms of 
say combat or maybe jumping in and of itself. Uh, at this point, uh, at this point, the only combat is uh, in the next level where you jump on top of uh, aggressive slimes. But then there will be a ranged weapon that will help you kill even more slimes. It's just that this first level, the, the library, is uh, more than a puzzle level. There's no enemy here except from the outside. I actually may put some swarms in this level, but uh, so far uh, that's intended to be just a puzzle level. We already have a Spartan character that is supposed to jump on top of the slime. Uh, okay, my delving, Yeah, as far as delving a bit more into the lore, what are Splatman exactly? Splatland is just a fiction name of whatever is left out of the humanity. Did you read the Renina's book? Right. Did you read the the text, the story in the Renina's book? Um, I, th I think I think I glanced over it. Yeah. By the way, maybe you should need to use this uh, chest. It's saying I need to complete the key, so... <laughs> yeah, but you also need to use the chest. Damn it. Cool, CA. It was. It is the only thing you didn't yet um, used correctly. <laughs> mm. um, anyway. Also, there is an inventory screen that uh, you may check there your items is. in it. Ah, that's what I was looking for. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can re read the descriptions of the items. <laughs> so how difficult or maybe not difficult is it to come up with various things for this game? You know, not, uh, items or um, levels or, and all the things in between. Well, it's a creative process. Level design is a creative process. You plan on mechanics, and then you build whatever you know with the mechanics you know and the, the abilities that play and works. And it's like writing a book, it's like drawing a picture, it's a creative art. Makes sense. Especially designing this puzzle. <laughs> For example, you can clearly see the work, but but yes, you need to do exactly this <laughs> to expose the work. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, it's a creative process, and it can be hard. It can be easy, but usually it needs refinements. No doubt, no doubt. Speaking mm, of which, where congratulations, are... you got the map, uh, the blank parchment. <laughs> Um, what is the state of the like actual full game at this point in time? Um, has there been development beyond the first chapter at this point, or yeah, there still... is a, there is a development behind the first chapter. I already started uh, developing the second chapter, uh, the Spark uh, facility itself, but it's nowhere to be seen. Yet. This demo is about five percent of the game. Five to six percent of the of the game. Initially, the project had a very big scope, but I decided to shorten it. In the point of level design, so the game won't get that huge. Uh, speeding around this demo takes twenty minutes, but ordinary people usually get an hour to complete the the demo. This is the pre last level. The next level is the last level. Okay. Um, and you're doing very well. You're doing very very well. <laughs> I expect oh, yeah. that people complete the entire demo in 40 minutes, or even in 30 minutes. But this level, uh, this puzzle level here, is especially designed to be a little bit of slow-paced level. Makes sense. Um, in terms of, you know, you do want to show what, not just, say, the puzzles are, but the pacing as well. It depends on the level. Puzzle level is a slower pace. And uh, this uh, navigation level, the next level we'll see, are more about more fast. They have less puzzles, but they have more combat and a lot of deaths. You die a lot in the next level. <laughs> um, in terms of how combat works, I mean, we've seen the you know 
you jump on slimes uh, heads, for lack of a better term, in order to destroy them. But uh, how does that evolve throughout the game? Um, the in the future levels, there will be different kind of swarms. There will be swarms with spikes that you can't just jump on top of them. There will be swarms that actually will vomit paint on you. That will, you have to dodge them. Uh, the the basic mechanic will still be jumping on top of them and. Until you take uh, the first range weapon, that you'll be able to shoot uh, powder with it. And uh, then I will actually increase other types of plants to be more. Like you know, Super Mario starts with the Goombas and then introduces you a Koopa Troopa, this uh, turtles with shells you kick. So this is the Goombas. These are the Goombas here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or now I'm showcasing different mechanics of these Goombas. Like their paint isn't just to be collected by you. It can break blocks. Yeah, yeah. I, I can definitely see where they are the level one one first enemy you encounter. Um Yes. You know, slimes are also like the default beginning enemy for a lot of RPGs. Now this isn't <laughs> one, but no, no, Color Blend FX is all about swarms. I think that the swarm will be the only one uh, enemy type of this game, except when uh, this guy uh, from the Ashens layer in infest the game. This uh, they were like creatures. They will be the secondary, the second enemy type of the game. Okay. And yeah. um, will there be bosses? I will, I will leave you without an answer to this question. <laughs> You'll find out yourself soon. That, I got to admit, that's, that's an interesting response because I would just expect it. Yes. Because I don't want to spoil the demo yet. And... Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, but... Nice headshot. <laughs> uh... <laughs> At least I feel put the entire game with checkpoints because I know where people should die, and I even designed the levels in such a way that I expect you to die there. <laughs> right. Yeah. When that's a, a you know that is. You know, in games like Limbo and Inside, you die a lot, but you aren't punished for your death because they're just telling yeah. a story. Like in Cover Blind yeah. Effect, you aren't really punished for your death. Except in the end screen, end screen when it just told you, so don't you die 100 times. Right. That, that's pretty in keeping with modern like indie uh, platformers of various sorts, where death is the most just, you know, slap on the wrist thing you can imagine. You know, you yeah. You might restart the screen or whatever, but... You know, or it's like Super Meat Boy, where you just respond. Oh, Super Meat Boy is nice. I love this game. <laughs> also, you notice that these slimes are starting to become very aggressive. They start to jump on your face. Mm -hmm. And you're already starting to struggle with them, because that's also a puzzle here. Right. And you still didn't solve it. <laughs> the learning curve is rising. as Yeah. One like, okay. Uh, Betty keeps getting devoured. <laughs> Should we be concerned? Oh, uh, SWAT. And uh, never mind. Um, see here. So <laughs> that was a work. That was a work. But you need this one to proceed, and you yeah. need it here. Yep. Yeah. Like, you know what to do. <laughs> Just switch if you get. Yes, fuel the madness. Now just stay up there and wait. You will eventually jump. Uh, I'm sure he'll get it soon. Yeah, I got it. I Almost just... Almost got it. Yep. Oh, well, you just get well, to jump in place. Yeah. Like, he said he knows what he has to do. It's just, you know, actually doing <laughs> You just had to jump in place because, yes, this level is the level where you you need to get used to the swarm mechanics. Because the swarms will be everything in the future. Well, until you get the... the well, basically, blocks and color in this color game where color does stuff, so... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and the 
um, slime whoa, whoa. Are, uh, <laughs> They're made of explodium. They are made of uh, the slime essence juice, you know. Right, the slime essence right. is a resource that Splatians use for everything. And you asked me about Splatland. Splatland is the fictional world of Colorblind Effects. It's in Sofia, Bulgaria. It is in Bulgaria, actually. And it is a, in a, the game is post humanity fiction. The humans already destroyed themselves by creating the Ashen Project. Now that's deep war. I'm spoiling this in front of three people here. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> but the game yeah. is post humanity fiction, and the only human being in the game is the goddess Reni. Right. She may be alive. And... She may be not. I won't. Spo- I won't major spoil the story. Indeed. And yeah, the levels here are kind of atypical for a platformer. You know, it's not grassland, desert land, ice land, fire land, what have you. It's city escapes. You mentioned that it's based off of Sofia, Bulgaria. Um, and you know, yes. right now, you don't know yet because uh, you didn't reach the Spark facility. It's actually in Bur- in Burgas, Bulgaria. But Wait, nothing right. hints it because everything is destroyed except the facility. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is my question is, um, is it all uh, cityscapes and city locations? Or, you know, like, will no. you be going out? Into- you can already see that you are in a forest. Right. You're in the forest underground. Mm-hmm. So that, that will continue. You were initially in a small village. Then it was, uh, you walked through something that was something, in, and then you are now in a forest. And you may notice that you're in a forest climbing a mountain. There is actually no city in the just, just pay attention to the background and the level name itself is Clark Forest. Right. And, and the forest is ending soon. We're getting to reach Spark, the laboratory. It's actually the, it's actually a new university, not a laboratory. It was used to be an old university. Now it is a laboratory. Hmm. Yeah. Now the game currently has a tentative release date of the year of 2022. Um, do you see yourself hitting that year? Because I think I can, but it also depends if I. It, it also depends if I'm to find a publisher. If I find a publisher, I will be working full time. And since the only thing that remains are uh, is mostly level design and a fewer bit of programming, mm. it's possible, very possible. But if I'm not find a publisher. Then it's still possible. It's just that the game will be a lot more smaller because, or I will just delay it if I need to. Like a lot of indie games get delayed for some reason. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a prime example of a game that I that uh, everyone loved this game despite it was delayed countless of times. Mm-hmm. Like. And in terms, jump. Yeah. In, in terms of getting a publisher and, you know, clearly you seek more development resources, um, are, is that to also get this game onto console? Like, you know, do, you know, do you see this game on, like, a PlayStation 4 or the Nintendo Switch? I see it. I actually, I can't talk about Nintendo Switch because of something, uh, but... Uh, um, maybe it won't be available for Nintendo Switch, but it may, and uh, it also may be available on Xbox, but uh, still nothing. I'm still not in uh, uh, research of these things. Yes, I am, but I can't talk about that because of countless NDS here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we are probably by talk of uh, consoles because of uh, things like that, but uh, I doubt, I think that there won't be a Switch version of this game, but it may be, nobody knows. Yes, I want, uh, if I have to be myself, I want it, I want to have a version for, you already unlocked this door. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but, uh, the game is uh, made with the console in mind. You can feel it's very easy to be played with gamepad. Yeah, I see this game working rather well on a Nintendo Switch. The Switch is very capable console. Yes, yeah. That's the only problem I have with it. Uh, like game. Like an rival runs a 30 FPS, a 30 FPS. A lot of games run a 30 FPS, and yes, that isn't anything protected by NDA. Nintendo, if you're watching this stream, we will start pressing Sony for once uh, <laughs> forever. Like, guys, switch was awesome, but your insecurities are were not. Um, make a better hardware console and then make very nice photorealistic Mario game like you did with Odyssey. Listen as you want to from your console and the only reason me not proceeding with my project on your console is because it's incapable. It's incapable. Um, and so I don't like releasing this game in 30 FPS. I will not. I'd rather not release it at all instead of releasing it in 30 FPS. This is my so far. So yes. far. Understandable because, yeah, playing an F a platform game at 30 FPS can, you know, it's going to feel sluggish. It will hurt you from inside. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts from inside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, there are rumors that a Switch Pro is coming next year, maybe, but... Well, you know, there's there just a lot of rumors that I will either... that I would rather confirm. <laughs> because I believe in this rumors. But, to be honest, we don't know. Even we don't know. Yet. No. Not yet, anyway. Like... Yes, we hope uh, there is a lot of rumors that Nintendo is making a new console. So much rumors that everyone knows about it. But what it is, I hope Nintendo announced it soon. Now, what about um, other computer platforms? Is this demo Windows only, or is the demo it's Windows only? And because uh, very, it's very unlikely that I will port it from other platforms initially. I may port it for Linux and Mac in the future, but I need to complete the game first. Of course. <clears throat> Common sense. That's, that's my music composer, <laughs> and the first one was me. And yeah, uh, and that's the demo. Yeah. Uh, right. So I'll see if my colleagues have any more questions for you at this point in time. Uh, I think I, I asked what I had. Yeah, I think I'm good. All right, then. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, thank you, Peter, for joining us here today and, you know, talking with us and, you know, uh, showing us the various development processes while we played your demo. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the game is Color Blend FX. Uh, you can, like, if you liked the demo, it's currently available on Steam. Um, and the game has a tentative release uh, time window of 2022. Um, we'll see how well that holds. You know, we might talk about this project again. You know, uh, um, further down the line, but you know, yeah. in the meantime, be sure to download the demo today. And that'll about do it for this installment of Fragments of the Gun. Um, as always, be sure to join us on the Sunday reviews. And until then, I shall wish you good gaming.